Hey guys, and welcome to episode number 79 of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia, and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is March... Hang on, I'm confused. Today is March 6th, 2017, which is a Monday, and I'm recording a knitting podcast as usual. If you're watching for the very first time, I really hope that you'll like it. And if you're coming back, thank you ever so much. I really, really, really appreciate you guys, and... I love that you're tuning in every week to talk to me about knitting. So, um, today I will talk about finished objects, works in progress, a lot of acquisitions, once again, shame on me, and then life in general. But before I could go into all of that, just a few things regarding the rubber brick group and everything. So, we have two knit alongs running at the moment. We have the Geeky Sock Along, which is a like, um, Geeky Sock Knit Along. And that runs until March 31st, so we are in the final leg of the cow, and I'm really, really excited to see all your finished objects. We have over 100 now, which is just insane, so if you need some inspiration, that's a great place to start. And yeah, all the prizes, all the rules, everything is listed out in the chat thread. I'll probably go through that, maybe... Why don't I go through that now? Because next week I'm not sure how I'm going to be recording. So um, I don't have anything to show um, with me today, but... Amongst the prizes, you can win a self-striping ball of yarn of your choice from Valkyrie Fibers. You can also um, win a speckly rainbow kind of skein from Golden Yarns, who is in the UK. We have a skein of yarn from Twisted Threads, who is in the US, like Valkyrie Fibers. Um, we have some bookmarks, some geeky bookmarks from Phantom Doodle Etsy Store, and we also have some... Stitch Workers from Knitting in France, who is also has an Etsy store. So I think that's all the prizes. If I forgot one, I'm really, really, really sorry. I'm just doing this right now. I didn't really prepare for this. But thank you so much to all of the makers who have donated prizes. And like I said, all the details you will find in the chat thread. So yeah, that's the Geeky Sock Along. We also have the One Ball with Love Cow, which is a year-long informal sock knit along to knit with commercial sock yarn. So again, that's super inspiring. So many people are joining in. I really didn't expect that. I just kind of started that as a group for myself and I thought maybe one or two people might join in and I didn't expect that many people to actually participate. So that's really, really, really fun. So that's the Knit Alongs. The group is called the Happy Knitting Podcast Group on Ravelry. So please feel free to join. We have a coupon code thread. You introduce yourself. You can promote what you're making if you are a maker of any kind. Um, you can ask me questions and that's also where you'll find all of the show notes. So if you have any questions or didn't understand something or I didn't mention something properly in this podcast, please go over to the Ravelry group and check the thread for each episode because that's where I link all of the projects and you should usually find everything in there, whether it's the name of a pattern or what needle size I'm using, the colorway of the yarn and so on. I always have everything listed in my project pages and those show notes will lead you right there. So that's it. Um, besides that, just very quickly at the top of the episode, thank you to everyone who sent me lovely messages and congratulations regarding my job. I really, really, really appreciated that. Thank you, each and every one of you. And also, um, again, I will go into more detail maybe la la later, but I have kind of shared on Instagram my, I guess, new job jitters, and I was feeling quite anxious, and lots of you reached out and sent me really, really reassuring messages. I actually didn't manage to reply to each and every one of you, but please do know that I appreciated that so much. And it made me feel so much better. And yeah, I just love you guys for that. So just wanted to get that off my chest and thank you so much. Um, so let's jump into some knitting. I was really, really sure that this week I would not have any finished objects, but then somehow it happened and um, the project that I finished are these socks for my sister Pauline. Um, I'm trying to knit my sister's more socks because they really enjoy them and they're really knitworthy. So this is a pair of socks. They look very small because my sister has tiny feet. I knit them on 2.5mm US 1.5 needles over 56 stitches. And they're just vanilla socks with a 1x1 one one rib. Um, stockinette socks and a fish lips kiss heel. So I pretty much always use the fish lips kiss heel. 
and I just love it so much. So, yeah, the colorway is so fun, isn't it? Um, it is a opal yarn. I used about 60 grams for this so uh, for these socks. I think even a little, even less than 60 grams of yarn. Um, and this is in Opal's Best Friends series, and this colorway is called Verbundenheit, and it's colorway number 8863. So I'm happy to have these off the needles, and the truth behind why I did finish them is I've been reading a lot. I love reading, but I don't always make time for reading, and um, I've been reading a lot on my phone using the Kindle app. And when I read on my phone especially, I can knit and read at the same time. So I was totally taken by this one book that I've just been enjoying so much and I was just knitting and knitting and knitting on vanilla socks because I think vanilla socks are the best thing to knit while reading. So that explains the progress on these socks. I think I was... I had not turned the heel. I think I was up here last week on the second sock. But I was just reading and reading and reading and suddenly it was time for the toe. So yeah, that's been really fun and I need to cast on some more vanilla socks. Um, I actually have a pair planned that I'll probably start today. So I can continue reading and knitting at the same time. So that's my only finished object for this week and these will go to my sister. I'm not sure if I'm going to send them to her or just wait until I see her next. We'll see, but that's done. Uh, so let's go straight into works in progress. By the way, I hope that you can hear me properly today. Um, in the last two weeks, I've had the microphone closer to my face and that has made the recording significantly louder. However, you could really hear my breathing sounds and something on the recording as well. So I didn't really like that. I felt like I had to be really careful, but still you had really annoying sounds on the microphone. So once again, I've placed it a little bit further away, hoping that this time the volume will still be fine but no weird breathing and drinking sounds will be vis uh, here <laughs> audible on the podcast. So I'm just seeing how that goes, but obviously I will only see that after I record it, so please bear with me if it's not ideal yet. Anyways, um, I have started a new project and it's kind of turned into a bit of an obsession. So no crochet blanket this week because I've been working on a new blanket. And those of you who've been watching for a longer time know that I have knit a Midas Square or Cozy Memories blanket once before. I finished it, I think, in November last year. And I really enjoyed knitting mine, and I always knew that at some point I would knit one, another one. And I was watching the Love Sock Wool podcast with Sarah, and she was just raving on about her newest blanket, and she had cast on another one as well, using larger squares. And I was like, okay, that needs to happen right now. So that's what I did last Monday. It's kind of my new job celebration blanket. I was like, I'll cast on a new blanket because today I got my new job. And that's what I did. So I am this time using the Coziest Memory pattern, Coziest Memories pattern by Kemper Ray. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I really just wanted to use a different pattern with a different decrease um, method, I guess but it will be linked in my project pages and I'm modifying it by using size zero needles once again. I started with 2.25. I actually knit two squares in 2.25, but I just really like knitting my squares on size zero or two millimeter needles. So I ripped it out and started again. I'm doing 56 stitches. So these squares are considerably larger than my last blanket. I did 40, 47 stitches, I believe. And on this one I'm doing 56 stitches and I have my previous Mided Square blanket on my couch and I have noticed that like this is four rows long, uh, four squares wide I suppose. And when I hold this next to my old blanket, the same length covers five squares. So yeah, this is my new obsession, my second Cozy Memories blanket. Um, so I'll just go through the squares really quickly. A lot of these are minis that I will send. So, for example, this one is a mini that I will send from a friend. I don't know what it is, but it's really, really pretty. The yellow is a Cascade Heritage that I used for my Find Your Fade. I think it's called Mustard. This is another leftover from the Pond colorway by Bärenwolle, which was really, really popular last year. I got some leftovers from a friend last year, and I've been coveting them and putting them into each and every blanket that I have. Um, I believe I'm 
95% sure this is a Drachenwolle Mini that I was also sent by a friend. This one, I'm not sure what it is, but it's lovely. This purple, I'm again 95% sure it's some kind of Malabrigo sock, because that's what it feels like. Um, this is Hedgerow Yarns that I use again for my uh, Find Your Fade. I think it's something Heather, Highland Heather, something like that. And then this square is um, Featherfin Yarns in the lovely colorway that I used to knit my pair of monkey socks in the beginning of this year. So I've done eight squares so far on two millimeter needles using the decrease method from Camper Ray's Coziest Memories blanket. And I'm really enjoying it. As you might remember, my last blanket I did the central double decrease that had more of a real um, line in the middle. And I really, really enjoyed that, but this time I just wanted to do something different. So I'm doing this and I'm really, really liking it. So I'm knitting away on my blanket and I love my crochet blanket as well and the, um, the crochet blankets do go a lot faster so that is definitely an advantage but by now my crochet blanket is really really large so it's kind of hard to see progress whereas with this every time you finish a square you've done like you know a tiny little project is instant gratification knitting and that definitely gives me a kick. So that's my blanket so far I'm just going to use crazy colors I'm only using sock yarn or fingering white yarn. Um, and I'm really excited about it. So yeah, that's kind of explains why I didn't do much progress on a few other projects. But I will this week show you my harvest sweater once again because I didn't show that last week. So I'm knitting the harvest sweater, which is a tin can knit pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's really, really amazing. And it's essentially just a top-down worsted weight sweater. Let me roll back to show it to you. So this is what it is looking like. So I obviously started it at the top and then after I separated for the sleeves I decided to knit the sleeves first. So the sleeves are both done and I'm just working on the body. So I think I'm about halfway down the body. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. I think I only picked this up once or twice this week. But where's my progress keeper? Yeah, you can see I haven't made a ton of progress. But yeah, I'm just, I think if I pick this up at least once a week, ideally twice a week and just knit a chunk of it, I think it should get finished relatively soon. Um, the yarn that I'm using for this is Malabrigo Rios in the Sabiduria colorway. And I have five skeins of it, which I think is, is going to be enough, but I don't have much left over. So sorry. So that's why I knit the sleeves first. So now I can just basically knit as long as I want or until I run out of yarn and I don't have to worry about Lee having yarn left over for the sleeves, for the collar or anything like that. Um, I did go down, I think, two needle sizes with this. I believe, but I, I, it's, it's all on my project pages. So if you are interested in it, do let me know. But my gauge was completely off. So I'm actually knitting the size extra small with which with blocking and my off gauge should get me a size small to medium. So that's what I'm hoping for at the moment. This yarn, it's a super wash merino yarn, so it does grow quite a bit when you block it. So I'm just hoping for the best, but I think it'll be fine. If it's a little bit more oversized, I don't care. And yeah. So that's my harvest sweater by Tin Can Knits. And it's kind of getting too large for a project bag. Talking about project bags, this one is one that I got from Julie of Diary of a Yarn Snow. I won this in one of her giveaways. And I just wanted to mention that I know that lots of people put buttons on their project bags and this one came with a button and I only realize now that underneath the button it's all like rusted and stained the fabric, which is fine. Like I don't mind and this button belongs to this bag so it's not gonna go, I'm not gonna take it off anytime or really be bothered by it but just remember if you're putting buttons on f your fancy favorite project bags just make sure that they don't get rusty and stain your fabric because I think that might really really upset some people. So yeah that's my harvest sweater. I don't know why my voice is so rusty today. <coughs> 
in this bag I have of course some more socks. So these are the socks that I showed you last week. Um, the yarn that I'm using for these socks is Emmy Lou Yarns. And she's in Germany and this is her 8020 Merino Polyami blend. I don't know the colorway name, I'm sorry. But um, I'm knitting these socks using a textured stitch from the Ringwood gloves on Knitty.com. And I have a bit of a mess here right now. I'm not sure what happened there. So I talked about this more last week. I found this textured stitch called Ringwood stitch on a glove pattern on um, Knitty.com. And I'm just using that exact stitch to knit a pair of socks. So I have linked to that pattern in my um, project pages. But essentially I'm just doing a 64 stitch sock. I'm doing them two at a time. I did about 20 rows of 2x2 two two ribbing and then I'm just knitting this textured pattern. Um, so I'll just give you a close up. I think it is so pretty. You can see one, color, uh, one sock is a little bit more neon speckled than the other one, but I absolutely love them. So I think I was close to the, to the heel last week. So I just put in some Fish Lips Kiss heels and knit a tiny bit on the foot. Again, I didn't do much progress because I spent, I think, like a good two days just working on the blanket. But these are coming along nicely. Knitting them two at a time on my Chagu 2.25mm US size 1 needles. And I'm absolutely loving them. So yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about that right now. I love knitting socks two at a time. I only don't like that whatever you do, they always get a little bit tangled sometimes. So you have to spend time untangling everything. But yeah, I'm really happy with them. And my focus is being crappy today. And lastly, I cast on a new pair of socks. And that's of course the first pair of socks for the New York Sock Collection, which if you don't know is a seven month long sock club that Mina Philip of Knitting Expat just started. So the first pattern came out on the 1st of March. It's called the Grand Central Socks. And of course I had to cast on. And I'm knitting these socks concurrently. So I'm knitting them one at a time, but kind of doing a little bit of one one sock and then a little bit on the next sock. So this is what the pattern looks like. It's really, really pretty. It's got this sort of textured stitch. And for me, it looks like little flower buds, like especially with this speckled yarn. It just pops out and it's a really, really great and fun texture. I really enjoy it. It does take a little bit more time, but yeah, I'm definitely enjoying it. I'm only doing the pattern on the front of the sock, like Mina suggests in her pattern. So the back is just plain vanilla sock. And like I said, I'm doing them concurrently. So the first one, this one already has its heel. And this one is ready for the heel. So I just wasn't in the mood of knitting another heel yesterday, but it's definitely ready. It's at, the, it's, at the, it's at the same point. So one with a heel, one without. And as you can see, this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love it. This yarn is from Hedgerow Yarns. Um, and the cutaway is Funfetti. And this is in her Merino Nylon High Twist Sock. So it's an 80-20 Merino Nylon Blend. And it's just, it's just so pretty. I have to show you another close-up. I'm so glad. I've kind of been hoarding this yarn, but I'm so glad to be using it because it is just so, so pretty. So yeah, I must admit something embarrassing. I sometimes, not very often, but sometimes I knit socks concurrently out of the same ball of yarn. So I'll have pull one from the center and then if I'm knitting on the other one, I'll just turn it around and then pull like this. And it turned into a big tangle. And I was trying to fix that. And I think my center pole just got stuck somewhere. So I had to draw it at a, like a quite a large amount of yarn and it all ended badly. I think I was sitting there um, trying to untangle everything for like probably an hour. And then at some point I just cut the yarn. And it sucked so much. I hate cutting the yarn. I actually even hate doing socks two at a time with two cakes because I just want to preserve the yarn as much as I can. So I had to cut and I think I threw away or like I couldn't salvage about five or eight grams of the yarn. Everything else, after once I cut it, cut it, it kind of, I managed to work most of it out. But it did hurt. It hurt to cut the yarn. 
But now I'm back to working on these socks and everything is tangle free and I'm trying very hard to keep it that way. But that's why when I knit socks two at a time I always split the yarn into two cakes because it can just end in a big tangle and cutting the yarn is the worst but with this one I think I didn't have a choice. So yeah that was a bit of a bummer but anyways the socks are so beautiful. I'm knitting them on US size 1 needles. I'm doing 64 stitches and I'm just loving them. And I, I just kind of got hooked and then those went really fast as well. So that's it for my works in progress and I'll be back with um, some acquisitions in one second. So once again I am back with acquisitions. So this week as you might maybe guess seeing I've got some good job news and everything I got a little bit of yarn and um, I just kind of paired up and some of it was gifts as well. So again, please don't judge. If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't watch this. So yeah, I'll just lead in with that. And the first thing I want to show you is I got this lovely gift from my friend. Um, I actually had convinced her to go to the Creative Messe, which was a creative and partly yarn related show, I think two weeks ago, and then I couldn't go. So I felt kind of bad. And when we met again, she actually had brought me this little gift bag with all lovely things and I won't show it all, I only wanted to show you the yarn. So she lovingly, she, she's so great, she gave me this wonderful skein of yarn and you can see the colors. It's quite obvious that I would love this because it's very red and pink with oranges and sort of like lighter parts. It's really, really, really pretty. And this skein of yarn, it's a 7525 um, sock yarn, is from a company that I have not seen or heard of before. It's from Wollwölfe and she said they're actually using, I think they're from Bavaria which is in the south of Germany where I live and they actually use the yarn from German sheep so it sounds like a nicely ethically produced yarn which I really like. So I don't think it has a colorway name and it is definitely more of like, like rougher sock yarn sort of like the more commercial sock yarn, but it feels really nice. I think the colors are going to be very, very fun and I can't wait to knit with this. So I thought I just had to share that with you. Um, next, something arrived that I ordered a couple of weeks ago and this is a sock blank that I ordered from Laughing Yaffle, who you might remember I used her yarn to knit my stripy valentine socks, which I would show, show to you right now if I wasn't wearing them on my feet and I'm not going to try to get my feet in the frame right now. But anyways, I really enjoyed the one ball of self-striping yarn that I ordered from her like a couple of months ago. So I, a few weeks back, I caught one of her updates for her sock blanks because she has some really amazing sock blanks. So this showed up, I think it took a while to show up, but this is from The Laughing Yaffle, who's Ali from the UK. Yeah, she's in the UK, I believe. I'm not sure where, but anyways, so this is her sock blank. Um, it's a 75-25 merino nylon sock blank, and the colorway is called Sugar Hiccup, which I think is so fun. And how awesome is this? She had two very similar ones, and this one had more like bright pink, so of course I went with this one. So this is a sock blank, so if you're not familiar with, with that, this is a piece of knitted fabric, it's definitely machine knitted and dyers then dye these and when you knit with them you start on one side, she has marked it with like a little bow tie and you just unravel it and because it's been dyed as a knitted fabric it will give you really really interesting effects when you knit it up into a pair of socks. So you can theoretically you know wind it up and then knit from a ball but what most people choose to do and what I will be doing is you can knit it straight from the blank and it will give you sort of like crinkled yarn but you can knit with that just fine and once you block your socks they'll be just normal socks like you won't see the crinkliness anymore so I have kind of been buying a couple of sock blanks in the last couple of months I think I have three in my stash now because I really really love sock blanks and I haven't really been daring to knit with them because I hate when you knit them up and then they're gone so I think now I might have to cast one of my sock blanks on pretty soon because I'm really excited about this and it's just so pretty. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, definitely check out the Laughing Yaffle Etsy store and of course I will link it in the show notes. Um, so that's one acquisition and I will try to put that back into this later. 
And then the majority of my acquisitions kind of has a bit of a backstory. So I feel like I'm constantly out of focus today. Um, as you might or might not know, we live in Munich, which is in the south of Germany. And there might, um, well, there is a really great yarn company that is relatively close to us, and that is Wollmeise. I'm sure most of you will have heard of Wollmeise before because it's quite a well-known German luxury sock brand by now, I think. And I've always wanted to go and I never got around to it. And I've actually owned a skein of Wollmeise before. Kai actually gave me a skein, I think, about a year ago. And then I didn't really like the colorway and I actually de-stashed it and he doesn't know about that. I felt so terrible because it was lying in my stash. I actually tried to knit with it once and then put it back into its skein form and it was just giving me such bad feelings because I knew that he put so much thought into it but I really didn't, he kind of got the wrong base so I couldn't knit socks out of it and I was really really feeling bad about it so in the end I actually de-stashed it because I thought it should go to a better home to someone who actually loves it and please don't ever tell Kai because he will hate me for this. Anyway, so that was my only experience with Wollmeise and I kind of didn't really get the hype around that after that. But on the weekend we decided to visit their store because, like I said, I got a junior job but I spent the week kind of not necessarily being happy about it but more like doubting everything and I really needed, really needed to get out of the house and celebrate and I think we both knew that. For me the best way to celebrate is to go yarn shopping. So we drove to Pfaffenhofen, which is about a one hour drive, a little bit less from where we live. And we went to the Wollmeise store and it was paradise. It's this huge yarn store just with their yarn. That's where they actually make it, I believe. And it was amazing. I will post some photos either in, in the beginning of the episode or now, I'm not quite sure. I, I only took like two or three photos, but it was the most amazing yarn store. Like, I'm always jealous of you guys in the UK or in the States because I feel like you have the prettier yarn stories but this one was gorgeous and it was filled with yarn and good thing oh my gosh it was it was, it was so amazing so yes there's a bunch of yarn that I got but I will say that two skeins actually Kai bought for himself because yes my boyfriend is crazy and he loves yarn it was so funny because he said he wasn't going to get anything for himself because that would just be too outrageous. But then he felt he was so in love with it. And there were a couple of ladies there and they were all kind of watching my boyfriend being the only man in the store and actually not just sitting there waiting for me to be finished, but actually picking out colors and going around the store and checking with me which kind of bases he could use to get socks out of it. And it was really, really, really fun. So I will show you what he picked out first. He got this one skein, and this is these are all in their twin base, which is their 80, 20 um, wool and nylon blend. So these are meant for socks. And all of these skeins are 150 grams. So I'm thinking I can get two pairs of socks out of one skein, or at least one pair of normal socks and one pair of shorty socks for myself. So he fell in love with this colorway, which is called Thriller. And he absolutely need, needed to have it, I think. It was so fun, he totally fell in love with it. I was like, yes, I'm buying that and you will knit me socks out of it today. So I was like, yeah, okay, fine. And then we found another one that we both really liked and he got this one as well. And he's been looking for Breaking Bad socks, as he calls them, after, you know, the show with yellow and green. And his favorite pair of socks are yellow and green and they are wearing out. So he fell in love with this one. This one is called um, Raupe, which means caterpillar. And this one is the one that I'm going to cast on today and to knit him a pair of socks because he is so excited about this. And we both kind of, this is going to sound really cheesy, but we've always wanted to have like matching socks. So I think I'm going to knit him a normal sized pair of socks and then make a similar pair of socks for myself, like shirty socks. And then we can be matchy matchy sock friends, which is so cheesy. And you probably think this is embarrassing, but anyways, and this one and all of the other ones that I got is in their Nobody is Perfect range, which is their, they had this, uh, these two huge shelves with colorways that were, something went wrong with them. So either they would have a knot and they would be labeled accordingly, or all the ones that I got in this one as well, there's just something wrong with the way that they dyed it. So, you know, it might have more black than their regular caterpillar colorway or something like that. 
which I think is really, really cool. I think it's so much more awesome to have these kind of out there skeins than their normal signature colorways. So yeah, I really love this, this one as well. And so these ones are Kai's and they're very colorful. And then the one thing I knew that I definitely wanted to get one skein of was their blend base, which is their wool um, and cashmere and I think wool cashmere and nylon blend. And I just really wanted to get one skein for myself to give myself a luxurious kind of shawl, something that I might possibly be able to dress up for work. So I picked out one skein and this is so beautiful. Can you see how tonal it is? It is this tonal bluish purple colorway. It's called Der Letzte Versuch. And it is just absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. And again, this is 150 grams of yarn. Um, it is a, I guess, a sport to fingering weight. And this is going to be turned into a shawl, hopefully very soon, because I just love it so much. There was also another colorway that I really loved that was more variegated. And I, would, I it was so hard to leave it there. But I knew that something more tonal would work better for me, because I like variegated yarns so much, but not necessarily for shawls. So this one is just my dream. I love it to death and it is so soft and yeah, it's mine. And once I found it, I did not, I did not put it down again because I just loved it so much. And then I also picked up some of their sock yarn. Again, all of these are in the Nobody's Perfect range, which I thought was really, really fun. I kind of, for some of them, I saw the regular colorway and then the ones where apparently something went wrong with the dye and these are just a little bit more grungy and I really like them. So I got two very similar ones. I saw this one. This one is their Scandalum Rosi colorway. And let's see. Their originally colorway, original colorway for this is, I think, much lighter. Whereas this one, it has sort of these grungy areas where like the gray and the black and the white kind of mix. And I think that's really awesome. And then you can see there are these flecks of like dark reddish purple going through it. I think it's going to be really, really fun for socks. Like it's going to pull, of course, but I think it's going to be very, very great. I am very excited. Sorry, I'm kind of saying the same things all over again because I'm just that excited about this yarn. And then I got the very, very similar one, which is this one. This one is the Lagitan colorway. And this one is basically the same idea, except it has these sort of like blue, very like bright blue and almost purple shades going through it, but also with the yellow and the black. And again, Kai was like, yeah, they're kind of the same, but I really just needed both. So I got both. Um, so I got these two and then Kai was kind of like, you need to get something that's out of your color zone. You need to get something that's crazy. And he was showing me all of these like rainbow skeins and I wasn't really feeling it. But then I found this one, which is actually quite similar to one that I have in my stash, but it's so gorgeous. This one is their Peter Haya colorway. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And it's got this super, super vibrant magenta, purple, uh, pink or red sort of. And then on the other side, it has these greens and yellows and these kind of in-between colors. So this is very, very bright. And again, I think this is going to be a very fun pair of socks or whatever I choose to make out of it. So I have lots of ideas for these and also because they're very sizable skeins. I have some ideas for what I'm going to do with the leftovers. So I think I definitely have enough Wollmeis in my stash for a while now. And I'm so happy to have some Wollmeis and skeins that I really, really love. Because like I said, having a skein in the stash that obviously cost quite a bit of money, but I didn't really love was just driving me insane. Also, I used to think that Wollmeis is really expensive, but they had some great sales there when we were there. And once you kind of calculate that these are 150 gram skeins, I was surprised that it's actually, I think the price is okay considering you're getting a very sort of luxurious yarn. So yeah, I'm just too excited about this. I can't even, I can't even. And I kind of spent all my weekend trying to not cast this on, but finish something instead, which is why I finished these socks. So now I, today it will be my cast on day. I will cast this one on for my boyfriend because of course, you know, when men buy yarn, or anyone really buys yarn, to, because, and they want to have socks, they want the socks to be finished yesterday. So I can't manage yesterday, I probably can't manage today either, but he, he's like, yeah, you just need to knit my yarn first. And he, yeah, I think I will knit him a pair of socks out of this. 
And these will be vanilla socks because my boyfriend has this strange obsession where he only really wants vanilla socks. And that works because I want to be reading and vanilla socks are great for that. And also this yarn is a tiny bit thicker. So I think this will be great for knitting men's sized socks because it will just go a tiny bit faster. So that's my huge, or uh, our huge Von Meisel haul. It's kind of insane. But I love it. I love it so much. I feel like my stash has been replenished for sure. Because I've been obviously buying a lot of yarn, but I've also been using a lot of yarn. So my stash actually hasn't really grown at all. Um, talking about stash, because that's it for my acquisitions. Um, I almost forgot to give you my knitting stats for, two, uh, for February. So in February, I finished another six pairs of socks, which is kind of insane. So that brings my total up to 12 pairs of socks. In fact, with this, this is pair number 13. So I guess my, pair, uh, my box of socks for 2017 is already finished. But yeah, like I said, I've been having, I've been having a lot of stress. I've been stress knitting and I've been job searching, which means it's in in insane and intense, but you have a lot of time. So I'm assuming that my number of finished socks will go down substantially when I start work. Not this Wednesday, but the Wednesday after. But yeah, so I finished six pairs of socks, um, three of which were, were gift socks. I also finished one sweater, which was the breathing space, and one shawl, and one hat. I should have written this down, but that should be around it. So that's my knitting stats for, uh, for, for February. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of it today. So with that, I think we're done with the knitting content of this show. So if you're in here for that, that's fine. I will just see you next week. And if you do want to stick around, I'll just talk about what's been happening. So yeah, most importantly, as I mentioned before, I got my job and I signed the job offer. Not without hesitation, to be honest, but I did decide it's a good first step and I need to, you know, just make that first step. And if it doesn't work out, I can always find something else. And why, why wouldn't it work out? So I signed my co job contract on Wednesday and after that I kind of, I don't know what happened, I was expecting to be really, you know, happy and over the moon and I think I got the jump jitters, this is what a lot of people said to me, you know, you start second guessing your decision because before I had, you know, all these options and by making a decision and signing for something, which is great, I had to of course cancel other interviews and, you know, all the other options disappeared. Again, it's totally fine, but it was it was harder than I expected. So I kind of wallowed and stuck, uh, stayed inside the apartment and did nothing really for about two days because yeah, it just took me some time to you know kind of wrap my head around it, and that's why we had a really really busy weekend. Like I was forcing myself to get out of the house and do things, and that actually has been really really good for me. It sounds so terrible, you know, being negative after just getting a job, which should be like the happiest moment of your life. But that's exactly why I was feeling bad, because I was thinking I have to be, you know, jumping all over the place and being super excited. And I, like, I felt like something was wrong because I wasn't that excited. But I think it is a good first step. And now I'm just actually really looking forward to starting, because only by starting I can find out if I like it. So I know that I should be enjoying these last, like, 10 days that I have before or less than that actually, before we, before I start, but it's hard to kind of relax for me anyways, and instead of just overthinking it. Um, a lot of people have been asking what kind of job I do, and to be honest, I just don't really feel comfortable sharing that right now. Not because it is a huge secret, but just because before I've always been really open about my studies, because that was kind of my own business, but now I'm, first of all, I'm, I want to know how it goes first because I might, you know, find out, I really hope I don't, but it is possible that I find out that it's not what I really want to do. And also, of course, there is a company involved and, you know, like there's so much going on. I, so I just really don't want to share that right now. I really hope that you guys understand. And, you know, in a few weeks, in a few months, we can definitely talk about it and, you know, maybe I'll feel differently then. But for now, that's it. Um, so, yeah. I hope, seriously, I really don't want to be mean about that. That's just, I, 
I think I'm pretty open about most things, but some things I just feel uncomfortable sharing. Um, so anyways, that was the major thing this week. And yeah, like I said, it's been up and down and excitement. And then I've been a bit nervous. And yesterday I actually got a few books. So I'm going to be reading up on some things now that I have to, now, now while I still have time. So I kind of go into it a little bit more prepared. I've also been doing the minimum amount of shopping I had to do to have something office worthy to wear on my first couple of days. I really didn't want, I don't want to be going out and buying all these work clothes right now when I don't really know what the dress code is going to be. But I needed some very basic things, so. Besides that, of course, I'm trying to knit as much as I possibly can right now because my knitting time will be limited. Although I think it's not going to be that bad. A few people have asked me. But um, my job is actually in walking distance of where I live, which for a living in Munich, that is a huge luxury. I think it's about an eight minute walk. And so that means I think I can actually squeeze in quite a bit of knit knitting because my boyfriend just has a lot longer work and um, commute. And I knit the most when I'm actually home alone. So I think I'm still going to ha have lots of time to do that. So I don't know. I might be too tired in the first couple of weeks. But generally, I think there should be plenty of time for me to knit and still bang out lots of prog um, 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 projects. Um, also, definitely, I will continue the podcast. Will I continue it in a weekly manner? I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see. I hope you guys understand. Again, I'm just going to do the best I can. But... Yeah, I just need to figure my life out first and then the podcast will come for sure. Um, we've also been playing a lot of tennis, which has been really fun. I've been starting to get back into tennis. I used to play when I was younger, but not never really well. And we used to play like maybe once every one or two weeks. And then last week, somehow my switch flipped and suddenly everything was working so well. And I totally got the hang of it again. And we actually played twice in the last couple of days. And it was just it's just been so much fun. So for me, tennis has just been great because when I do sports like running or yoga or something, I still overthink things. And what I need to do is turn my brain off every now and then. And tennis does that for me. Tennis for me is the one hour when I don't think about anything job related or future related. I just play tennis and, you know, smash the ball as hard as I can. And it, 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 it is really just working wonder for me. I'm really, really enjoying it. Like we went yesterday and already I'm like, I want to go again. I want to play again. And it's really great to do something like that together because Kai and I actually don't have that many common interests, which is fine. But every now and then to do something like that together is really fun. Um, so yeah, on the weekend, like I said, we went to Pfaffenhofen to go yarn shopping. And we also hung around there, did some shopping, went to a lovely coffee shop, which was really great. So we kind of made a day trip out of it. Um, I was really happy because Kai enjoyed it so much. I kind of thought that, you know, I was dragging him along, but he really enjoyed it. Um, also, um, it, ha it happens quite often that we do things spontaneously and we visit places and afterwards someone on Instagram, some of my friends will be like, well, I live there, why didn't you say something? And I just wanted to say, please don't ever take that personally. It's just that we often do a, th a lot of things spontaneously. And also, I travel most with my boyfriend and he's already being very, very, very good putting up with all of my yarn craziness. So I kind of don't want to overdo it with him. But mostly it is really just, I talk to so many people and I love all of my knitting friends, but the sort of information of where everyone is and what's close to something just gets lost, lost in my mind. So please don't ever take that personally. Um, yesterday, we also went out for the best cake ever. It was amazing. And then Kai took me out to Korean dinner because he loves Korean food and I love all kinds of food, so we went to this Korean place in Munich and it was quite interesting. I kind of had expected a little bit more in terms of ambience and like, yeah, I don't know, but the food was really interesting and fun and great and they're doing like the barbecue on the table, so that was fun and at the moment we're really trying to do, you know, do more things and go more out of our ways because we both tend to be very routine people, so you know, we'll have the same pizza every Sunday and we'll do the same things all the time. And it's fun to do different things and, you know, have little adventures together. So, yeah. Um, in terms of what's happening this week, we're actually going away again. And you guys are going to think I'm insane, but yes, we're going away again to the Algoi, which is where we were, like, 
three weeks ago, and actually two weeks ago, and then six weeks ago, and also on New Year's Eve. So that's where um, Kai's parents actually have a tiny flat that no one uses. So we can just go there and have little holidays there whenever we want, which is fantastic. So it actually happened that Kai, in I think in January, he just took two days of holidays in the middle of March, having no idea what I would be doing, what he would be doing, and it turned out that these are the two, last two days before I start working. So we have a four-day weekend, I guess, or a four-day holiday just before I start my new job, which is perfect. So because we didn't really want to do anything too fancy, spend too much money in Frankly, I'm just too lazy and I don't want to be, you know, risking being stranded at some airport in, I don't know, Barcelona or something the day before I have to start my new work. We decided to just go down there again and really just enjoy ourselves, do some little day trips. So that's what we're going to be doing on the weekend, which also means that it kind of mucks up with my um, podcasting schedule. So I record on Mondays and there's only one Monday left before I start working, so... Once I start working, I'm probably going to be recording on the weekends anyways. And then next Monday, we're going to be traveling. So I kind of thought whether I would just not podcast, but then I felt kind of bad because obviously once I start working, things are probably going to get jumbled all over the place anyways. So I'd really like to, at least until then, keep a schedule. So what I think I'll be doing is I'll be taking my recording stuff with me and see if I'll have time and place and lighting to record some kind of short travel episode because I'll definitely be bringing lots of knitting so I'll definitely have something to talk about. So I will try to fit something in some kind of video but no promises. Like I said it just depends on what we're doing but I'll try to get some kind of video uploaded next Monday or something like that. So I'll be hearing from you, uh, you'll be hearing from me then. Until then I hope that I'll see you on the Ravelry group or through the YouTube comments or on Instagram. As usual you know I love talking to you guys. I really really Love hearing from you and chatting and sharing all the knitting and yarny goodness. So at the end of this episode, once again, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you guys so much. I love talking to you. And yeah, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful week. Happy knitting. And I will see you next week. Bye.